Sky for Eagle. Okay, he's coming along. We copy out. Eagle. Okay, 
Okay, I'm still on flu, uh, so we may tend to lose as we gradually pitch over. Let me try auto again now, see what happens. Roger. Okay, looks like it's old. Roger, we got good data. We're go, same type, we're go. 2,000 feet, 2,000 feet, into the egg, 47 degrees. Roger. 37 degrees. Eagle looking great, here go. Altitude 1600. 1400 feet, still looking very good. Roger, 1202, we copy it. 35 degrees. 35 degrees, 750, coming down to 23. 700 feet, 21 down, 33 degrees. 100 feet, down to 19. 540 feet, down to 30, down to 15. Then 400 feet, down to 9. Three and a half, 47 forward. What up? On one and a half, one and a half down. 70. That's the shadow out there. 50 down at two and a half. 19 forward. Altitude, velocity, light. Three and a half down. 220 feet. 13 forward. 11 forward, coming down nicely. 200 feet. Four and a half down. Five and a half down. 160 feet. Six and a half down. Five and a half down. Nine forward. That's good. 120 feet. Feet, three and a half down, nine forward. Five percent. Seventy five. Hey, seventy five feet. That's looking good. Down a half. Six forward. Sixty seconds. Lights on. Six. Down two and a half. Forward. Forward. Forty feet down, two and a half. Picking up the steps. Thirty feet, two and a half down. Make shadow. Four forward. Four forward. Drift into the right level. Thirty down a half. Thirty seconds forward. Contact light. We got to get down, Eagle. Houston, uh, and Quality Base here. The Eagle has landed.
All right. Hey, well, who wants a t-shirt? You got another one? Nick's got one right here. I see you guys are worn out from Six Flags. Anyone throw up on a roller coaster today? Point them out. Point them out right here. Ooh. I got a few photos from the day. We, we started... We started the day on a spiritual note, and uh, I had a junior high session right in here. Start to deploy. What's on the inside? How are you deploying? That's how you know you're you're really getting through. Ironically, my message was on paying attention, and he fell asleep. Huh? Who is that guy? I'm sorry, man. I put you to sleep. All right, a few more pictures from the day. How many got wet at Six Flags? I think we got a video too, a roller coaster. Here we go. Was this Goliath? today. Keep going. Here we go. You guys ready to play a game? Our first game is called The Cosmic Clash. JJ, tell us about this game. Epic battle scene. We have two astronauts. That's right. Or creatures up here battling yep. to the death. Well, not quite death, but close it's close to it and so I need you Woo. I need you to get ready so everybody stand up on your feet everybody stand up stand on your up. feet stand up on your feet here we go we're gonna start with the wave over there Daniel are you ready oh I'm ready here we go the wave ready ready and wave Coming back! It's coming! Great job, great job, great job. Okay, great job. This is this is the reverse wave where you sit down and then stand back up. Here we go. Sit down, stand back up. Ready, go. Wait. Some of you so confused. Nice, nice. So confused. Got it. Spot on. So confused. That's good. That's good. All right, it's battle time. It's battle time. It's battle time. We've got some youth pastors representing their youth groups tonight. What's your name, sir? We got Pastor Mikey. Make some noise for Pastor Mikey. And we got Pastor Jimmy. Make some noise for Pastor Jimmy. Here we go. We need a countdown on the clock. 60 seconds. Ready, set. Clash, go, Clash, go, 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 fight, go. fight, fight. Knock each other out. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, Pastor Ash. Jimmy is down. Pastor Mikey takes round one. He takes round one. The best Get back up three. there. Get back Help up there, back Jimmy. Up. Come on, cheer him on, cheer him on. Mikey 
Mikey advances. Mikey wins round one. Great job, great job, great job. The next contestant's on his way out. Here we go. Mikey, jump back up there. Winner stays. Winner stays. We got... We got to get the gloves. We got Pastor Edom. Winner stays, winner stays. Jump up there, Mikey. Jump up there, Mikey. We got... We got Pastor Mikey still on the throne, and we got Pastor Eom making some noise for Pastor Eom. Here we go. Here we go. Let's start the countdown. Three. Two, one, fight, yeah, fight, fight, go, 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 cheer him on, cheer him on, oh, Mikey remains undefeated, he wins round one, undefeated, here we go, Rocket best man. two out of three, best two out of three, Rocket Man has, he, he has his thrusters engaged, here we go, next round, who are you cheering for, sir, Mikey or Eam? Ready, set, clash, go, 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 go. Here we go, here we go. Oh, oh, Mikey remains undefeated. Pastor Eom, thank you for playing. Thank He's you for there. playing. Godzilla. Great job, great job, great job. Everyone say, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. We got Pastor Mikey, give it up for Pastor Mikey. Undefeated. And we got Pastor Daniel. Here we go, Pastor Daniel. All right. Here we go. Let's we go. start We're the countdown. In three, two, one. Fight, 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 fight. Oh. 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 Mikey. They said he's too small. Mikey is undefeated. Here we go, here we go. Godzilla didn't stand Five a chance. Oh. Five and oh. Here we go. We got Neil Armstrong versus Godzilla. Here we go, Neil Armstrong. Let's start the, the countdown. Hero. Ready, set. We need a shoe tie. A we shoe need tie. a shoe tie. The countdown's going, go, 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 go. Here we go, here we go. Fight, fight, fight. Oh! Pastor Daniel, thank you for playing. Thank you for playing. He's eliminated. Let's get our next contestant up. All right, Mike, this guy's. How you feeling? You're six and up. He said this is too easy. He said oh, this boy. is too easy. Oh boy. We got Pastor Marquise. Give it up for Marquise. Marquise was itching to play this game. I could yeah. barely hold him back. He couldn't wait to get up here. Here we go. We're Let's clashing in three, two, two one. one. Go, go. Go. I think that was a tie. Let's do it again. Tie. Let's do it Jump again. back up there. Jump back up there. We're getting, Mikey, that it was, was a close. tie. You're getting tested for the first time, Mikey. This is your first real test. He's, Marquise came to play. He's seven rounds deep. Here we go. Let's start the countdown. Three, two, two one, one go. Fight, fight, fight. Flash. The cosmos. Oh, wow, wow. Oh, 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 hey, oh. make it. Oh, my goodness. One. The knockout punch. There's one. There's one round. There's one. One round. Jump back up there. Jump, Jump back, back up, up there. there. Jump back up there. It's one to zero. Marquise one is zero. in the lead. If Marquise wins this, he stands as champ. If Mikey wins this, we do one more round for a tiebreaker. JJ, on your call, on your call. Ready. Ready. Set. Clash. Go, go, go. Fight. 
They got the strategy down. They got the strategy down. Oh! oh! He ties it up. One to one. One to one. One to one. Jump one to back one. Up there. It comes down Winner to this. Take all. Now, JJ, I think whoever's foot touches first is the loser. Right. Whoever touches the mat right. first. No ties on this. No one. ties. All right. No Here ties. we go. Here we go. Ready. Come on, cheer them on. Set. Cheer them on. Go, go, go. Fight, fight, fight. Oh, Mikey. Great job, Marquise. We Great got, job. Thanks for playing. We got we one more. One. We got one, one more. One contestant. One more. He's gassed. He's, he's, he's breathing for air. Someone replace his oxygen tank. He needs it. This is like, this is like Who we got? ninth Who round. Who is this, JJ? Who is this? Ethan. Pastor Ethan versus Pastor Mikey. Here we go. It all comes down to this. Here we go. Ready, set, go. Go. Fight, fight, fight. Pastor Ethan. Ethan. It's like a fishbowl. Come on, do you think Pastor Mikey can pull it off again? He needs some cheering. Here we go. Round two. Ready, set, clash. Go, go. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Oh! Pastor Ethan is the champ! He's the champ! Great job, great, great job. job. Let's give it up for our contestants Let's one more give it time. Up. That was incredible. Great job, great job. Congratulations. Any, any words? Adrian, I did it! There you go. I don't think they understood that reference. These are 2000s kids. We need some youth pastors. We do. We, we need some uh, We need some new youth pastors. New we need some pastors. Good point. Yeah. Good first, point. First three years. First three years. First three years. If you've been a youth pastor, three years or less. Three years, you three have years. less. All right, three come on less. up. Come on. All right, all right. Yo, you don't need you don't need to take your jacket off for this one. Five youth passes, three years. Come on, jump on up here, jump on up here. Yep, jump on go. up here. Jump on up here. All right, you guys are gonna come, come on over up, here. Come on up. We're gonna be in single We're good, we're line. good, we're good. Are you gonna face We got five, that we got camera. five. Thank you, thank you. All right, Nick. You're gonna Nick, introduce us to our youth pastors. Now we need everyone for this particular game, you gotta be quiet. Stream right. for all the rest. Tell us who you are, where you're from. My name's Anthony. I'm from Cathedral Valley, California. Yeah, Anthony. <laughs> Tyler from Phoenix, Arizona. Tyler. Marwan from Torrance, California. Let's go, Marwan. <laughs> Martin from Tucson Baptist. Yes. Eddie, Faith Baptist, Canoga Park. <laughs> Represent. All right, so these youth pastors are fairly new, fairly new, so Brother Chapel, I think they should go through some kind of initiation here. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's line you guys all up here. I'm going to put the first. Come on over here. Stand right here on this line. And uh, you're going to lift up your pant leg there on your right side. And what, which, what we want you to do is take that rubber band and you're gonna pull that rubber band up to right about the meaty part of the calf, okay? You gotta pull, your, pull, your pants up. pull your pants up a little bit more. How much? Uh, yeah, to your knee. Right there? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Now pull that, pull that rubber band right up to the meaty part of your calf there. Now, nope, underneath the pant leg. Oh, underneath? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, yeah. Yep, right there. Yes, 
So what's going to happen here is these youth pastors are going to have a kazoo in their mouth. How many of you ever used a kazoo to annoy your parents or your brothers and sisters before? Yeah, absolutely. They are the most annoying instruments on the planet. But as you know, any sound that you make, the kazoo makes. And so these guys are going to have some rubber bands right around their calves. And the guys behind them are going to pull that rubber band back and let it fly. And if, if that youth pastor makes a sound, we will all know because the sound will come through the kazoo. So the pastor that makes a sound gets snapped again. You gotta hum for it. Are you ready for this? This is going to be a testament to your ability to be tough in a moment of serious pain. Are you ready for this, sir? I'm going to have the mic pointed right at the kazoo. Brother Chapel, just for fun, let's put that mic down by the rubber band and make a nice, crisp sound there. Let's see. Yeah. He was shaking a bit, it. but no, it's man. It. These guys are tough. These guys are tough. We need bigger All right, let's, bigger? Let's, let's yeah, try, try to get as, yeah. Stone oh bones. my goodness! There you go. Not even a, not my even a flinch. My word! My word! Here we go. Hey, double them up. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Wow! Nothing. 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 My goodness! All right. Might have to go to round two on this one. You ready? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, okay. Here we go. Round two. Round two. Real good. Real good. Does that count? No. I don't know. <laughs> there was an echo. <laughs> he looked back at him. Too. He looked back he at was him. He angry. Oh man! Here we, here we go. Here we go. I received some intel in my ear. We're gonna change up the competition. I need everybody to come up here, stand straight across, and we are gonna eliminate whoever has the widest leg. Whoever has the widest leg. Whoever has the widest leg. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir, but you've been eliminated. You've been eliminated. Give it up for him right here. And we've got a four-way tie for first place. Give it up for these volunteers, these youth pastors. Hey, Thank you guys for playing. Good job. Hey, Ethan, come out here. Yeah. All right, we're going to have now another game. This game is called Chain Link Words. I need six couples that are youth pastors, youth pastors' wives. Six couples that are youth pastors and youth this pastors' wives. This is a wives. safe one. You're not going to get hurt. Up. I promise we won't snap you with rubber bands, okay? I need six couples. Harry, come on up. Right here. Married guys, couples. Come on up. Married couples. Married couples. Yes, married couples. There we go. Awesome. Here's one. Two, three, four. One, two. One, two, three, four. Five, six, five, six. Come on up. Come on up. All right, 
let me tell you how this game works. I need everyone to be quiet because this game takes a little bit of explaining. So what we're going to do is we're going to play wives against the husbands. Wives against the husbands. And the winners get Starbucks gift cards. So it's a little bit of incentive. Here's how the game works. Here's how the game works. We are going to have one person in front of the microphone here, and the rest of the team will be facing you. Uh, the person in front of the microphone will see a word come up on the screen, and they will do everything they can to describe the word through actions, through other words, whatever they can do to describe the word. That person will have to get that word right, and then it'll be the next person's turn. Now, here's the catch. The next person has to remember all the words that were guessed before them. So if you're down to 10 words, you've got to guess the other nine and then remember your own word and you get those 10 points. You cannot get a point until you guess all the words. Contestants, do you understand? No, okay, all right. So. Here's what's going on. You're going to have words on the screen, okay? Someone's going to be up here describing those words to you. And basically, the person on your team's going to come up, and you're going to describe the word to them, and they're going to try to guess that word, okay? Once they guess that word, you can move on to the next person. The next person has to remember the words that were guessed before them, and then they you can describe the next word and they'll get all the points for those words, okay? You guys understand? You'll get it as it goes, okay? You'll get it as it goes. Here's what we're gonna do, it's always ladies first, so let's start with the ladies. I need one lady to be over here describing the words to the other ladies, one lady to volunteer. Come on up, come on. Ladies, stand in the line right here. Guys, you can stand over there for right now. All the words will start with the first letter. Can I see the first letter on the screen? It's going to be the letter B, okay? The letter B. Rules what I can and can't say. You just cannot say the word. That's all, okay? All right. So you're going to stand right in front of that microphone, okay? So we're going to go one at a time. So once the first person goes, you just move on to the next person, and you keep rotating. So once you go, get to the end of the line, okay? All right, who do you think is going to win? Is it going to be the ladies? Or is it going to be the guys? All right, you are going to have 90 seconds to get as many points as possible. Can I have the clock up? I think we've got a clock. All right, can we reset that clock? Reset that clock on your mark. Get set, go. Brain. All right, next person. Okay, uh, sport, you run around all these little things. Baseball. That, yes. Now guess the... Brain, oh. baseball. Thank you. Um, you wear it in the middle of your waist. Belt. Okay. Brain, baseball. Okay. Okay, um, a sport where you shoot a ball into a hoop. Basketball. The first word. Brain. The first word oh, of that. Okay. The first part of that. Basket. Uh-huh. Uh, brain, baseball, basket. And one more. Brain, baseball. Nope. Belt. Basket. Okay. Very good. There we go. It's in the air. It has wings. A bird. Brain basket, belt, bird, baseball. Okay. Okay. When you don't have anything on the bottom of your shoes, feet. When you don't have anything, you are naked. No, it starts with the B. <laughs> on just on the bottom. Just on bear, the bottom. Barefoot. Yeah. Oh, bear. uh, you brain. have to go in order. <laughs> You can help her with the words. Okay, okay. Uh, you're go the sport where you go around all the... I, I'm the sorry, sport where you go around and all, and you have a home run. I'm helping baseball, you with all. Yeah, and then you... Baseball, and you wear belt, the... Uh-huh, and you... you ba basket. Uh-huh, and... Bird. And then bear. Okay. Bear, very good, okay. very good, very okay, good, very good. Good job, good job. Band-aid. Okay, and you... Uh, brain. Baseball. Belt. Two. Bird. Bird. One. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Let's see, here we go. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Guys, do you think you can beat seven? All right, guys, you know how it works. 
Words have to go in order, okay? Come on up, who's gonna be the describer? All right, you can go ahead and be the describer. Here we go. All right, guys, remember you rotate. So, what is the next letter? Can I see the next letter? It's H, H is the next letter. On your marks, get set, go. Uh, not a plane, but a? Helicopter. Perfect. Uh, 9114. Help. Perfect. Helicopter, help. Yep. Very good. Not Very hell, nice. not hell, not hell, but up. Not, a not hell, oh, but. heaven. Thank you. Okay, not a plane, but. Helicopter. 911. Help. Not hell. Heaven. Thank you. All right, there we go. Thanksgiving, not turkey, but. Thanksgiving, not turkey. What's your other meat? Ham. Perfect. Helicopter, help. Not hell. Heaven, ham. Yes, there's four. Foot. Hand. Not plane. Helicopter, help, heaven. Not turkey. Ham, hand. Perfect. All right, 25 seconds Helicopter. now. Something, islands, vacation, warm. Hawaii. Perfect. So, helicopter. Not 911. Help. Not hell. Heaven. Turkey. Ham. Foot. Hand. Vacation. Hawaii. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, it's Three, a spread, not peanut two, butter. Two, one. That's it. That's it. That's it. Here we go. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, guys. Six. All right, ladies, round number two. You know how it goes. I need a new describer up front. New describer up front. Yes, okay. For round number two, we're gonna twist a little bit, okay? So, the describer can only help with the initial word. They can't help you remember the order, okay? Yes, the team can help them remember. All right, can I see the letter on the board, please? The letter S, the letter S. Okay, ladies, are you ready? On your mark. Get set, go! Okay, it's at the beach. Sun, sand. 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 Yeah. Um, when you hear a noise, it's a... Sound? Yep. Sand, sound. Good job. Okay, not Batman, but it's a ride. They just show... Um, uh, blue and red with the letter on his chest. Superman! Yeah. Sand. Who's the other guy? What was the you can't. I can't, I Superman. can't. Good job. Okay, the football, Kansas City Chiefs won this year. Kansas City Chiefs won this year, football. The biggest game, the big, um, second, the biggest game in football, the Chiefs, yeah. Sand. They can help you. Sand, sound, super, football. Good, Good four. Okay, not sweet, but not sweet, but sour. Um, um, it's a mineral. Salt. Salty. Yep. Okay. Oh. Sand, sound, Superman, uh, Super Bowl, and salty. Good job. All right, there's five. There's okay. five. Now, um, my, um, this and meatballs. Say it again. This and meatballs. Spaghetti. Yeah. A sand, sound, Super Bowl, Superman, salty. Animal that smells really bad. Black and Stinky? white. Black Stinky. and white animal that smells. Time, 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 time. That's time. it. Time, time, time. All right, we had a little complication on the word spaghetti. They went out of order on their way back around. So spaghetti is off the board. Yes. So the ladies are up to 12 points, 12 points, guys. Come on over. Don't let me see you guys cheating because you were trying to call out the ladies. All right, I need a new describer, new describer. Oh. 
You are currently at six. You need seven. Combination, all right, here we go. You need seven here. Okay, now letter. listen. You can only give helps and hints for the first initial word, but they and then help. it's up to them to give hand motions to help with the order. You have to say them in order. Okay, can I get the letter on the board, please? It's the letter F. F. Here we go, F. on your marks, guys. Get set, go! All right, uh, baseball, football. F football. All right, uh, uh, football without tackle is blank. Fo wave waving uh, flag. American flag. Yeah, there you football go. Football flag. There, yes, yeah. All right, two on board. Uh, we like to eat this. Food. There, yeah, that's it. Football flag food. There you go. Three on the board. Uh, a uh, trumpet. No, Trombone. Uh, <laughs> fiddle. I'm sorry. Fiddle. <laughs> fiddle. <laughs> is it, is is it, it a up? fiddle? Oh, oh he it. said it. He said it. We'll move on to the next word. Next we word. Next, next, next word. word. Next word. Okay. If, uh, at Fourth of July, we light off fireworks, sparklers. Those like like that. The first one, but uh, it's a different version of it. Fireworks. Uh, like we eat. Uh, it's like saltine crackers. Uh, yeah. Firecrackers. There you go. Football, flag, food, firecracker. Okay, what is this? What is this? Forehead. There you go. Football, flag, food, firecracker, forehead. All right, next. Okay, um, burgers and they're, they're made of potatoes. You put them in a... When you eat with uh, with burgers, what do you do with burgers? Burgers, and what? Uh, but it's a, a country. French fries. There you go. You can do it. Okay. Football, food. No, no. Football flag. Yeah, yeah. Food. Time, time, no. time. That's it. That's it. We have to take fiddle off the board because the describer said fiddle. So they got one, two, three, four. Five, and it is officially a ladies' victory. <laughs> Round of applause, ladies. <laughs> Let's congratulate these youth pastors' wives once again. Felipe has always loved to talk about outer space. In fact, in high school, he wanted to join the rocket club right away. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of expensive and they don't, know, they don't always work. Yeah, Felipe's always trying to look out for the little guy. And well, when I told him that Pluto is not a real planet, he, he took that pretty hard. I had no idea that Felipe had this space interest, but when we started filming for youth conference a few months back, Oh, I think that really sparked something in him. Does Felipe have what it takes to be an astronaut? No. No. It wasn't long before Felipe was making plans for a rocket, and none of us thought anything of it. We just kind of let him do his thing. He doesn't have a lot of mechanical training, uh, but he figured out how to get his paws around the scissors, and uh, he went to town with that. He got on this rocket that he built with, of course, some of these crazy people, and they shot it off. Time passed, and we didn't really think much of it until we saw him streaking through the sky. And by that point, it's too late. Just said a prayer for him. Temperatures are sitting at 61 in Buffalo. We have a northerly wind at 7. Good sleeping weather tonight, folks. Uh, you, what was that? Did anybody see that thing? You tell us what you think it is. Right here. Ready? Right there. Bakersfield resident Tim Harvey sent it from his ring camera. He lives in Hagen Oaks off Ming and Versace Drive. Well, I have to say I was happy for the guy. He finally uh, 
in the sky, uh, something you always dreamed of. I've been doing this for <clears throat> 30 years, so, and I can't describe to you what I saw that night. There was a spaceship just flying through the sky. Now, I was real hopped up on Red Bull at the time, but I know what I saw. It was the night that I, I met him, that I met the boy from the stars. It was a quiet night. It was just before the radish harvest. And all of a sudden, I, I saw this, this crazy light. It was coming from, from the sky. It was, it was like a, a firefly, but, but bigger, and, and it didn't blink on and off. But what did the Lord do? He took my Felipe to Amish country. Those Amish people, they forgive everybody. And then I thought to myself, if it ain't those Russell boys at it again, I, I swore last time that it would be the last time, and so I had to I had to go finish them off. I thought they were gonna get me like Joe said they would. Mama, Joe, Joe warned me. He told me, stay away from that west side. They're gonna, they're gonna snatch you. So I, I got to the barn, and at first I saw the very edge of his foot, and it was all hairy, and I thought he is one of the Russell boys. But then I got a better look, and it turns out it was, it was him. I saw him plain as day. Was I scared? No, not really, not at all, not at all. I thought, I'm surely gonna die. I'm going to see daddy. Mama, I'm going to see daddy. <sighs> Man, I thought for sure that was it for me. And uh, I just wanted to think about my uh, 12 children back at home. Gertrude, Mildreth. We didn't know if he was gonna end up staying or not, but he seemed inclined. Zebediah had just left, so we needed another farmhand. And we started to realize that here on this little square of land that, that we think of as, as paradise, that God had, had sent a blessing, had sent a gift to us in the form of this red, hairy creature. Those Amish people, they don't want to get all excited about technology. And boy, oh boy, not having a microwave and not having some of those conveniences, I think that would be good for him. We had to think of something to name him, so we had to think of a good Bible name for him. And we call him Esau because he was red and hairy all over and frankly a little bit strange. You know, they say kids these days, they, they'll bail one field of hay and they'll want to take a break. But you know what, Esau, he always, he always had a mind to work and uh, I think in large part that's, that's due to me. You know, I just don't think he'd really fit in with the Amish. Felipe is kind of a free spirit. Uh, I, I think he learned a lot from us. Uh, I sure hope so, but uh, I, I think that, that it was able to rub off a little bit on him. Uh, teach him some, some work ethic, teach him some grit. But, uh, you know, I, I think we learned a, a little bit from him too. You know, I drive past that farm. Looks like they got a new farmhand out there. A uh, bit of a hairy boy, but uh, he, he looks like he's uh, working hard. Them Russell boys started started talking to him about Rum Springer, putting foolish notions in his head. He he started just getting short with us. It'd only be seven or eight acres of hay baling, and, and he would start uh, getting an attitude. Uh, I, I never saw him do it for sure, but I, I'm pretty sure I just about caught him rolling his eyes. He normally kept him so still, but just his attitude with us. He always kept talking about that, that youth conference. Uh, he, 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 he loved that thing. It was, it was the one thing that we could never uh, get him to forget. One day I was out in the barn and, and I saw him with the, the remnants of that little buggy he rode in on. And 
it looked like he was trying to to fix it up, to, to escape, to leave behind all that he'd known for the last two months of his life. I, I told him everything that you're looking for is, is right here, but he wanted, he wanted more. He wanted a youth conference. You know, I don't, I don't need two hats. I, I need my boy. I need my, my Esau to, 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 to be here, to be with us. Every place that Felipe has ever gone, they've wanted him to stay. And sometimes he wants to stay too. But youth conference, this is where he belongs. Ready for this? Daniel, what are we playing? Yes, sir. The name of this game, the name of this game is Space Jam. Space Jam. And this is our annual youth conference tradition dunk contest. And here's what we've done. Here's what we've done. While we get set up here, we have hand-picked eight contestants. So if you were selected for this dunk contest, come on down to the front. Come, come on down on to the down. front. If you were selected for this dunk contest, come on down. Come on up here. We have eight contestants tonight, eight contestants for round one. For round one, they're all gonna get two dunk attempts. Two dunk attempts. Two dunk attempts each. And I think we need some judges. I think we need some judges as well. We need some judges. We, we need some qualified judges. Brother Weaver, Brother Weaver. Can you come judge this dunk contest for us, Brother Weaver? Come on down here, Brother Weaver. Brother Weaver! JJ, get me a judge. We need two more judges. I need, two more judges. I need Pastor Thompson. Come on down. Let's see here. We, we got official, we got official Let's wear. Let's see here. We need one more, Dan. We one need more, one more. One more. Let's see, let's see. Dr. Shetler, Dr. Shetler, come on up here. Here we go. All right, contestants, you're gonna have two opportunities in round one, two dunk attempts. What you're gonna do is you're gonna run up, you're gonna jump, you're gonna catapult off this trampoline and you're gonna dunk with flair, you're gonna dunk with style. <laughs> Two attempts, all right? Two attempts. And our judges are gonna score your attempts on a scale of one to 10. Negative one to 10. Negative one to 10. Negative one to 10. We want All right, contestants, who wants to go first? You are, all right, come on up here, come on up here. What is your name, sir? Jackson. We got Jackson. Make some noise for Jackson. All right, Jackson, here we go. Dunk attempt number one. Let's see what you got. Let's see what you got. Let's cheer him on. Let's cheer him on. Oh, oh, nice.
nice try. Good effort. Good effort. That was you got one more up. attempt. One more attempt. That was shaping one up. One more to be attempt. Nice. One more attempt. Here you go, Jackson. Here you go. One more attempt. Come on, cheer him on. Cheer him on. Hey! Oh, there it is. Okay. There it a is. A little windmill. A little windmill. Come on, judges. Let's see what this score is. We got a seven. We got a five. And we got another five, another five. We got 17, Nick. We got a 17 for Jackson. That Jackson, was... step right on over here. All right, who's up next? Who's up next? All right, come on up. What is your name, sir? Leonard. We got Leonard. Make some noise for Leonard. <laughs> Attempt number one. Here we go. You need to beat a 17 to stay alive. Oh, with the reverse. Nice. Give it up for Leonard. Let's see what this score is. Let's see what this score is. We got a nine, an eight, and a nine. A nine, an eight, and a nine. We got a 26. 26. A 26 for Leonard. What is your name, sir? Avengers. All righty then. Here we go. Ready? Let's give it up for Batman. Attempt number one. Go for it. Oh, he makes the trick clean. Make some noise for him. Great job, great job. That was attempt number one. Re re attempt number one. Recalibrate, recalibrate bat suit. It was the goggles. It was the goggles. All right, come on. Here we go. Attempt number two. Here we go. Batman, Batman. the dismount. Great job, great job, great job. We got a nine, we got a seven. And we've got a five. That's a 21, 21, a 21. What's your name, sir? TJ. TJ, make some noise for TJ. Here we go, TJ. Oh, 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 oh. Was that an attempt? Did that count as an attempt? No, 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 that was not an attempt. Here we go, here we go. Oh, oh, oh! With the pull up. All right, let's see this score. Let's With see this score. Up. We got an eight, 24, 24, 24. All right, he's asking for a lob. Here we go, what's your name, sir? Uh, Guz. We got Guz, give it up for Guz. Here we go. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, off the alley oof With the lob. Yes. All right, we got an eight, a, a nine, and a 10. 27, 27, Gus is in the lead. We got Drew. Here we go, Drew, attempt number one. Show us something, Drew. We got Uncle Drew. Oh, the windmill. All right, that was attempt number one, Drew. Here we go, Drew. Here we go, attempt number two. The windmill. windmill! We got eight, eight, and eight. 24, 24 for Drew. What's your name, sir? We got Josh. Here we go, Josh. Hey. Attempt number one. Hey, Nick, he needs your help. He needs your help, Nick. We, we need you to, to sit right here. We need He's you to gonna sit jump right here. over Nick. All right, Josh, you got this. All right, Josh, here we go. Attempt number one. He looks unsure. Oh, just missed it. All right, attempt number two. You got one more chance, one more chance. Here we go, Josh, 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 Josh. Oh, Josh, he cleared him. He cleared very him. nice, very nice. Here we go. We got an eight, a seven, and a seven, 22, 22. And we got our final contestant here. What's your name, sir? Adrian Abasco. Adrian. Here we go, Adrian. Attempt number one in the dunks. Here, here we go. go. Oh, just missed it, just missed it. Here we go, here we go. Attempt number two. 
Here we go, Adrian. Oh, got it, got it. We need a score, we need a score. We got an eight, we got a six and a six. That would be a 20, a 20. All right, we're gonna eliminate some of our contestants here. Jackson, you can go ahead and take a seat. Let's see, what score did you have? 24, what score did you have? Here we go, round two, round two, this is all right, here we go. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up here. We got our top five. Our top five right here. Our top five. Here, here we go. go. We got Leonard first. Brand new score starting at zero. Here we go, Leonard. Here we go. Two attempts. Reverse windmill. All right, we got a 10, a nine, and a nine, a 28, a 28. That's a solid score. Yeah, we need a lob, we need a lob. We need a lob, who wants to throw a lob? You throw a lob, throw a lob. All right, we got Uncle Drew, Uncle Drew. Here we go, here we go. He wants a lob, attempt number one. You gotta beat a 28 for the lead. Oh, just missed it. All right, Drew, attempt number two, attempt number two. That's bad lob. Come Here on, we go, he likes the lob. Him. Let's cheer him on, Come let's on. cheer him on. Cheer him on, cheer him on. Hand. Hand. Here we go, Uncle Drew, go for it. Oh, off the lob. We got an eight, eight across the board, 24. Drew, you can take a seat. All right, here we go, TJ, TJ, attempt number one. Oh, 360, straight up, straight up. All right, that's attempt number one. That was attempt number one. Here we go, TJ, 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 TJ. 360, with the finish. Leonard, TJ takes the lead. Stay up here in case we need to do one final round. Stay up here. All right, here we go. Guz, we got Guz, we got Guz. Let's try to fix that backboard, team. Let's try to fix that backboard. All right, here we go, Guz, here we go. No hanging on the rim, no hanging on the rim. All right, here we go, just dunk it. Here we go, here we go, Guz. Attempt number one, attempt number one. Oh, just missed the windmill, the windmill. Here we go, attempt number two, attempt number two. You need a 30 to tie, a 30 to tie. Go for it. Oh, he threw it in. He threw it in off the windmill. We got a 25. Guys, you can have a seat. Give it up for Guys. And we got Josh. Here we go, Josh. Our final contestant. Here we go, Josh. Yeah, he wants a lob. He needs a lob. He needs a lob. All right, he's he's setting it up. All right, here we go. Attempt number one. Oh, got it! Two hands off the lob. 
two hands. We got an eight, an eight, and an eight. 24. 24. Thank you, Josh. You can go ahead and have a seat. That means our champion tonight with the perfect 30 is TJ. TJ. Make some noise for TJ. Good job, TJ. Hey, let's give a round of applause to our games crew. Good job. All right. Real quick, a few things, and we're going to move on in our service. Uh, first of all, I want to remind you, tomorrow morning we have a question and answer uh, during our second hour together, and the, the number for the question and answer is in the book. So if you have a question that you would like to be addressed, uh, go ahead and text the number. The number's on the screen. It's also in your book. We also have some merchandise. That's right. Daniel, uh, tell us about the merchandise we have out in the lobby. We have some fresh merch right out this way. If you haven't stopped by yet, make sure you do. It's going fast. It's going fast. We got this gray t-shirt here, the white long sleeve, the gray sweater, as well as this tan tee. Stand up if you're wearing some youth conference merch. Stand up if you're wearing some youth conference merch. Great. You guys look fantastic. If you want to look as really cool good. as these people, make sure you stop by the merch shop on your way out. All right. Let's have a word of prayer. We're going to move on to the next portion of our service. Our Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for uh, the great day that you gave us, uh, the time that we had at Six Flags, Lord, uh, for bringing us uh, back safely tonight, and for the fun that you've allowed us uh, to have in this service. God, I just pray that you would speak to our hearts now as we move uh, to uh, the next part through the music and the preaching, and we pray that you'd be honored and glorified by all of it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. expression of a single word, God created the heavens and the earth. The sum of all matter in the vast universe came into existence at his will. From the unimaginably small, most intricate quantum mechanics of the atom to the perfectly balanced forces of energy and gravity governing galaxies billions of light years from us. sovereignly reigns. In his immeasurable love, God created a planet of intricate order and balance, perfectly positioned to sustain and nurture life. God, the creator of time and space, is also the creator of you. You are individually created by God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made with purpose and distinction. Into this infinitesimally small speck of space dust we call Earth. God, the Creator, sent His Son, Jesus Christ, so He could have a relationship with you. Now, this incomprehensibly powerful God invites you to follow Him, to enjoy Him. He invites you to know Him and to make Him known. He is the all powerful creator. You can rely on him. He is the all-knowing sovereign. You can trust in him. He is the ever-faithful savior. You can call on him. He is the eternal lover of your soul. You can follow him.
let's all stand up together and we're going to sing a few songs and keep that same energy. And we've had a fun day. Uh, but as I said last night, this is really why we're here. And so let's sing out. Let's sing out to the Lord and uh, get ready for what he has in store for us. We had a great night last night, by the way. Uh, you listened well, but let's do that again. And I know that it's been a long day, uh, but really tune in for the next few moments. Eliminate distractions. Don't walk out unless you have to. It's an absolute emergency. Uh, but let's sing and let's direct this praise to the Lord and uh, honor him as we sing together. Worship His holy name. 
Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, for I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, we can experience the fullnesses of God's blessing because of Christ who dwells within us. You know, it's, you see, it's because of Christ that we have a home in heaven. It's because of Christ that we don't need to dread hell. It's because of Christ that we can experience victory in our Christian lives. It's not through our own strength, but it's because of Christ who dwells within us. Join us as we sing this next song, Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me. What gift of grace is Jesus my
Wonderful singing together. You can be seated. We're going to have a word of prayer. And after I'm done praying, I'm excited uh, for you to hear. We're going to hear a special. And right after the special, I'm excited for you to hear from our speaker tonight, uh, Brother Jim Shetler. Brother Shetler is, he's no stranger uh, to this conference and to our school. Uh, but I'm thankful for him personally. Uh, for the encouragement that he is to me, the message that I've heard him preach and how that's impacted me. But I know he has a heart for you. And for decades now, he's talked to groups just like this, small and large. God has used them in a great way uh, to communicate truth uh, that, that is so needy. And so we're gonna have a word of prayer. You're gonna hear a special. And uh, then we're gonna hear from Brother Shetler. Thank you, Brother Shetler, for being with us and for investing in us tonight. I'm praying for you as you preach. Let's give him our full devotion. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for uh, moments like these where we can sing praises to you and ponder the thought that we will uh, praise your name forever as forever you will reign. We thank you for the truth that you are on your throne right now, that you are in control. And that, God, you, you love us. You have purpose for us. And even when the world seems out of control, you're in control. And even when sometimes things seem difficult or unclear, that you give us clarity, clarity from your word. God, I thank you for the message that was preached last night and for how uh, these, uh, these teenagers respond, responded, Lord. I pray that you would do it again in even a greater way. Speak to us through your word tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I will live. 
lift up your name. I will lift up your, lift up your name. Your name is wonderful. Your name is powerful. You call into the deep and oceans tremble. Your name is glorious. Your name victorious. You are the Good job. Good job. Amen. Hey, listen, these are the freshman 15. They were sitting where you were sitting a year ago. And I tell you what, I think every one of them would tell you their lives have been completely changed by going to Bible college. I trusted Christ when I was 12 years old, but I did not live for the Lord in my teen years at all. If you would have known Jim Shetler at 16, you would have laughed if someone would have said, you know, Jim's a Christian because I did not live for the Lord. I truly believe I trusted Christ at 12, but like the people of Israel, I wandered, not for 40 years, but I wandered for six years of my life. But it was at Bible college, outside of salvation, every major decision I ever made in my life, I made at Bible college. I think of those freshmen 15 that were just here. 
A year ago, man, they were just sitting right where you are, and their lives now are on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to just take a moment. I want to thank the Lord for my pastor, uh, Pastor Chapel, and putting this on. This is an amazing thing that a church puts on for all of you. Let me tell you, I think that's fabulous. Larry does a great job, doesn't he? Man, praise the Lord for Larry. Give him a hand. Give Larry a hand. Does a super job. And I'm so thankful for him and his team. He's got an incredible team. And praise the Lord for Felipe. Man, way to go, Felipe. Now, I want to start with something because... We live in great times right now. We really do. This is the best time to be a believer because the darker it is, the brighter light is. And uh, just by the way, just look around you right now. There is still hope for America. Look around. Hey, look at the person next to you right now and say, hey, thanks for coming to Youth Conference. Look at the person on the other side. Tell them, I love you. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) All right, so the early church had a lot of really cool greetings. So let's practice a few greetings of the early church. I I really mean it. They really, this was good for them. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Here we go. Here's one. Now, even before the church started, they used this, but the church still used it as well. They would see somebody, maybe they would say, Shalom, shalom, and then peace, prosper. Look at somebody, everybody together. Shalom, shalom. Okay, now here's another one. When they would see another believer in the marketplace or whatever, you see, the church has always had a blessed hope, and the blessed hope was always that Jesus would return. So if you were a believer in Jesus Christ, You always believed that Christ could come back at any time. So a lot of times when you saw another believer, you would say, Maranatha, everyone together? And that meant, lo, he cometh. So so look at someone across the room and say, Maranatha. Maranatha, Maranatha. okay. But this is my favorite. We're getting close to Easter, so this is my favorite. And this is what it meant to be a believer. You see, we have a risen Savior. So when they saw each other, and it was during the week, and they weren't together, you know, for church or whatever, and they saw each other, doesn't matter if it was Jerusalem or Antioch, they would see a brother or sister in Christ, and they'd say, he is risen. And your, bro- your friend, your brother in Christ would answer back, he is risen Indeed. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Balcony, there aren't many of you up there, but here's what I want you to do. I want you to yell out, he is risen. I'll tell you when. He is risen, and then we're going to all respond, he is risen indeed. You guys ready up there? Okay, it's got to be good. Here we go. You're going to say he is risen, and we are going to nail it, he is risen indeed. All right? Go ahead, Balcony. Three, two, one. I like, they got to do that again. I just like that. I just like that. All right, we're going to try that. Let's do it the other. No, I like it this way. I like it this way. Balcony. That was good, Balcony. Try that one more time. Three, two, one. And aren't you thankful for that? You can be seated. Amen. So, um, Psalm 24, verse 3 says, this is not our text, but I want to talk to you about the name of your conference. Psalm 24, verse 3 says, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? So um, some years ago, I was taking a group when I was pastoring to Israel. And we flew from, uh, well, we went from Santa Maria to LAX. We flew over to LaGuardia. We picked up a group that was going to go with us from the Bahamas. That was really a great group. And so there was about 40 of us all together. Uh, The church that I pastored, several of them, and then this group from the Bahamas. And we were going to go over to Israel. And we were in LaGuardia. 
And uh, we're loading, and my wife was with me, and Marilee and I worked it out. So she had an aisle row right here, and I had an aisle row right here. So we were next to each other, but we also had aisle rows. Uh, Marilee, too, had two Hasidic Orthodox Jew guys sitting next to her. They don't even talk to Gentiles, let alone a woman. So she wasn't going to talk much that, uh, you know, that on that trip. And then there was me, and then there was five empty seats all the way across. And then on the other side of that, there were three other seats. So it was like three, five, three across the plane. And I'm sitting on the end, and I'm going like, okay, this is getting kind of nice. I, could, I had these images of me laying down, you know, and, and everything like that. Well, um, as it, everyone started coming in, a young man came in. I don't know, his early 20s, whatever. Young man comes in, and he sits at the other end of my aisle. I'm going, that's okay. That's still a lot of seats there. So I'm okay with that. He says, he kind of gives me an eye, you know. You know I didn't say, he's risen, you know. He's, I didn't do that. But anyways, um, so he sits down. And it's getting just about the end. And we're getting everyone filled up and everything. And a young lady comes in. And the young lady is in the row in front of the row that me and this young man are in. And she's putting stuff in, in, the, in the, you know, the place up there, the storage thing. And she's putting stuff. And she keeps looking down at this guy. And I'm going like, well, you know, what's going on here, you know? And she, and she keeps looking down. And then she stops. And she says, Nathan, Nathan. And with, immediately, the guy looks up. And when the guy looks up, he says, Charlotte, Charlotte, is that you? And I'm sitting there going like, Whoa, what do we got going here? This is kind of cool. <laughs> and, she, and she said, Nathan, Charlotte, I don't think I've seen you since high school. And they looked like they were in the early 20s, so probably three, four years or so. And then, man, Charlotte, I haven't seen you since high school. Well, why are you going to Israel? And she says, oh, man, Nathan, I'm doing my Aliyah. She, he says, no way. You're not doing your Aliyah. She says, I am. You're not going to believe this, Charlotte. I'm doing my Aliyah. Oh, no way. And they hugged each other. And I'm sitting there going, isn't this the coolest thing? We got two young people doing their Aliyah together. What is Aliyah? <laughs> I don't have a clue. But it's like, I'm finding this out. And Nathan says, Charlotte, sit with me on the way there. He looks down at me and he, and, and he says, hey, is it okay, buddy, if, if we sit together? I said, man, you sit together. You're doing your aliyah, man. You sit together. <laughs> so we, we go about two hours into the flight. We get our first meal. And uh, I said, man, I just got to find this out. I just got to find out what's going on here. And I said, Nathan, Charlotte, you know, they're like, you know our name? Yeah, you shouted it in the plane, you know. <laughs> I said, Nathan, Charlotte, you guys are going to Israel to do your aliyah. I said, now, I've been to Israel. but if I got lived on a kibbutz in Israel. And I said, I don't know, but I just can't remember. What is your aliyah? And I remember Charlotte said, you lived on a kibbutz in Israel? You know, kind of like you're a Gentile and you were on a kibbutz? I said, yeah. And she said, you don't know what aliyah is? I said, no, tell me what aliyah means. And she said, aliyah, listen, is the Hebrew word to ascend. To ascend. Now, when it says in, in, in Psalm 24, verse 3, who shall aliyah into the hill of the Lord? Who shall ascend? So what you're doing is you're going up to Jerusalem. But this is what it means now. It's kind of part of the Zionist movement, and it's all over the world. And if you're a Jewish young person, whether it's Russia, France, or California... One of the things that they're inviting people to do, if you're Jewish, is to do your aliyah and come back to Israel. Now, you got to get this part. So Charlotte and Nathan said, when you do your aliyah, you become a part of the state of Israel. And I said, well, what does that exactly mean? And they said, well, actually, the government now will take care of us. And Nathan, he's going to do his aliyah in an archaeological dig down in the Negev. So he'll be working down there as part of the state of Israel. The state of Israel will take care of his food. It'll take care of his lodging. He, the state of Israel will completely provide for Nathan. 
They said, oh, that's, and what about you, Charlotte? What are you doing? She said, I'm going to be a representative. Actually, I'm taking young Jewish young people and as a tour guide around Israel to get them to want to do their Aliyah. And I said, well, that's really neat. Now, how long do you do this? And Charlotte and Nathan looked at each other, and then they looked at me. You don't understand. This is for the rest of our lives. I said, what do you mean the rest of your lives? We have given up our U.S. citizenship. We are no longer U.S. citizens. We are now citizens of Israel. And now we've given our lives to the Zionist movement and to the nation of Israel. And I said, no, wait, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. So you guys aren't U.S. citizens anymore. No. We will live our lives now for the rest of our lives for the nation of Israel because we're doing our Aliyah. I went, well, this is a pretty big deal. So we fly for about eight hours and we start coming down over the Mediterranean down into Israel and we're getting close to Tel Aviv and the captain comes on. He says, if you look over on the left-hand side of the airplane, you can begin to see the coastline of Israel and you can see Tel Aviv. So everyone's looking out the windows, you know, we're all trying to look out the windows. And I look back at Charlotte and Nathan. Now they didn't, they weren't that close to the windows, but they're trying to look out the windows. And I look back at Charlotte and Charlotte's got tears coming down her cheeks. And I'm sitting there thinking, it's finally hit her. No more America. It's Israel for the rest of your life. And I said to Charlotte, Charlotte, you okay? What happens next, young people? I don't ever want to forget. Charlotte looks at me and she says this. You think these are tears of sorrow? And I went, yeah. <laughs> she said, these are not tears of sorrow. These are tears of joy. I'm about to give my life for the state of Israel. There is no greater thing I could ever do. These are tears of joy. Young people, I will tell you something. I thought in that, in that row that day, how many young people that claim they have a risen Savior and have a relationship with a living God who you can't get them to live for God for one week. Charlotte and Nathan have given their lives for the state of Israel. Some of you need to have an aliyah tonight and you need to ascend. Hey, we, did, we went to this youth conference called Ascend. Yeah, it means aliyah. It means I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Young people, let me tell you something. If there has ever been a time for you to ascend, it is now. It is your time. This is your generation. This is your world. And there has never been a time that we need you to ascend like we do right now. Now I'd like to have you take your Bibles and turn to our text, John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Now I want to be very transparent with you, and I want to speak to you tonight, and I want to share some things with you tonight. I uh, studied, I don't want to get you know, too sensational here, but I've studied definitely since January for the last three months on a passage of Scripture for this youth conference. But I didn't have peace about preaching it. But I studied for three months. I went back and forth. I went back and forth over that chapter. I got my outline. I got my illustrations. But I didn't have peace. Last night, I sat right back there where Brother Williams is, way back by the wall. And Brother Miller got up, and he said, take your Bibles and turn to Daniel chapter 3. That is what I have studied for youth conference for three months. But you know what? I got so excited because I said, you know, Lord, I didn't have peace. I didn't think that's what you wanted me to preach. 
And Brother Miller preached last night about those three young men that took a stand. Now, I'm going to share with you today, tonight, what I believe that looks like for our country, for your community, for your church, and what that looks like in being the witness that God wants you to be for our world. Look at John chapter 11, if you would. I was having my devotion some years ago, and I was in the Gospel of John, and uh, that one morning I was in John chapter 11. Now, I knew about this, this passage. I had preached from this passage, and this is the passage where Jesus' good friend Lazarus dies. Now, he was sick, and while he was sick, Jesus got word. Of course, he's omniscient, so he knew already. But the, the word got to Jesus that, hey, your good friend Lazarus is sick. And, of course, the disciples are probably thinking, hey, are we going to go and heal him? Because that's what you do, Jesus. And surely if you've healed anybody, you're going to heal your good friend Lazarus. But Jesus doesn't go. And Lazarus dies. Because the Lord's got a greater principle and a greater purpose and a greater promise. In the book of John, there are seven I am statements in the gospel of John. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the vine. I am the way, the truth, and the life. But my favorite one is found in John 11. He let Lazarus die because he was going to raise Lazarus up from the dead. Martha came out, Lazarus' sister, and said, like, wow, where have you been? My brother died because you weren't here. You could have healed him. And Jesus says to Martha, hey, I am the resurrection and the life. You believe in me, you will live forever, man. I am the resurrection, Martha. Don't you get what I'm trying to tell you? I am the resurrection. So he comes to the grave, and by the way, shortest verse in the Bible when he gets to the grave. Everybody know it? Shortest verse in the Bible? Jesus wept. Jesus wept. He gets to the grave, and he cries. The grief that they have for the lost one, I think also for their unbelief, he sheds tears. And then we pick up the story. So I'm having my devotions that morning. I'm in John chapter 11, and, and I read this, starting at verse 38, and that's our text. Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It, it was a cave and a... Now, this is going to become very important for this message, okay? So let me start this again, and you help me on the word when I get to it. It was a cave and a... Everyone together? Stone. stone. That wasn't very good. We need your help here, okay? And a... Stone. That was good. And a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the, everyone together. Stone. Now I'm having my devotions, I'm reading this, and I'm thinking, all right, like, why did you say that, Jesus? Okay, in just a minute, you're going to raise a dead person up from, up to life. I'm thinking to myself, if you can raise Lazarus back to life, I think you can move a stone out of the way. And I'm thinking to myself, why did you have them move that stone? Well, my first thought was, oh, the Lord wants them to be a part of the miracle. The Lord wants them to experience part of the miracle. So it's like, oh, that's cool. So, that, so I, I, I kind of like that. So I keep reading. So here you go. Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, oh Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he'd been dead for four days. Jesus saith unto her, said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldst see the glory of God. And this is what this is all about. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always, but... Because the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And I like, I like verse 43. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, come forth. Is that all he said? What else did he say? Lazarus come forth. So the old southern gospel preacher once said this. The old camp meeting preacher said, he had to say Lazarus. Or everyone would have came out of the grave. I like that. 
So he says, Lazarus, can the rest of you guys stay right where you are, okay? Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth. Now get this. Bound, hand and foot, with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. So, so Lazarus is coming out of, he's alive. And he's coming out of the tomb like this. And Jesus said unto them, here he does it again. Loose him and let him go. Now, young people, I'm thinking to myself again for the second time in my devotions. I'm thinking, now, the Lord could have done one of these, and that, those grave clothes could have came out, and they could have been laundered by the time they get the ground. He could have had Lazarus just walk right through those grave clothes. But what did he say to them? He said, hey, get in there and help him take off all those dead clothes. That morning in my devotions, young people, I thought to myself, Lord, this is pretty interesting. The two things he told them to do is exactly what he tells the church to do in 2023. Now listen to me. Move a stone away to get Jesus to dead people. You know what I call that? That's evangelism. We're going to talk about that tonight. Moving stones out of the way. He said, move the stone out of the way so I can get to a dead person. And young people, that's what your job is on planet Earth, or he would have just taken you home when you got saved. You're here to move stones out of the way to get Jesus to dead people. And by the way, the sooner we realize why we're here, the better off our life is going to be. Then the second thing, hey, hey, help him take those old grave clothes off. You know what I call that? That's discipleship. Taking off the old life and living a new life in Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you why your church exists. How many of you belong to a church? Raise your hand. How many belong to a church? Okay, can I tell you the two reasons why your church exists? Number one, evangelism. You're supposed to move stones out of the way to get Jesus to dead people. Number two, discipleship. You're to get the old life off and start living the new life. Now, many of you have a lot of old clothes from the old life, and you need some discipleship help. But at some point, you need to help people. There's people that you've been saved for a while that you need to help disciple. Now, we're not going to talk about discipleship tonight, but that is really needed in our church. But we are going to talk about rolling stones away. So I want to talk to you tonight about how do we roll stones out of the way to get Jesus to dead people. So are you ready? Number one, with creativity. With creativity. Now this is really good. We got to think about ways that we could do it. How many stand, I just, just so I can uh, get an idea, don't, don't feel bad about this, but stand up if you go to a public high school. You go to public high school, stand up. I just want to see all my public high school students. Okay? All right. Good number. Good number. All right. They still keep coming up here. Okay, public high. Thank you. Maybe seated. You go to a Christian school, stand up. You go to a Christian school, stand up. Okay? All right. Thank you. Maybe seated. You, you're homeschooled, stand up. You're homeschooled, stand up. Yeah! Amen. Amen. All right. Have a seat. You're still on COVID. You don't go to school anywhere. Stand up. No. All right. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. I thought so. Yeah. You look like you don't go to school. Okay. So I want to share some things with you. Because no matter what school you're in and no matter where you are, there's things that you can do, but you got to, number one, you got to roll stones away with what? Everyone together? Creativity. Creativity. So take your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, and I like this story. Now, um, we have this camp here called Joshua Camps, and on um, Sunday night at Joshua Camps, many years, many, many weeks, huh, I'll come out with all the campers, and we got like basketball camp and music camp, and we've got volleyball camp, and we've got all these different camps going on. And that Sunday night, with the first night there with all the campers, I'll bring out a basketball. And I'll say, hey, campers, everyone together, what do I got? Basketball! I said, no, this isn't a basketball. This is a bridge. 
This is a bridge that you can use to bring people to Jesus Christ. And they're all kind of like, what are you talking about, man? That's a basketball. We play a game called basketball. No, 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 no. Not anymore. Now you don't play basketball for you or your statistics anymore. Now you start playing for Jesus Christ. And you can use that. Then I bring up volleyball. And I said, everyone together, what's the volleyball? They all say a bridge. I said, no, no, this isn't a bridge. This is a tool. This is a tool you girls can use to bring people to Jesus Christ. And then I bring out a violin. And I said, everyone together, what do I got a vi- what, what is this? And everyone goes, like, we don't I know. I don't know what to say. I said, it's a violin. That's what it is. No. <laughs> I said, these are instruments that you can use for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You just got to get everyone together. You just got to get creative. creative. You just got to get creative. Look at Luke chapter 5. Everyone, Luke chapter 5, look at verse 17. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he, that would be Yeshua, Jesus was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Now look at this, verse 18. Get ready, I need you. And by the way, you're doing good. And behold, men brought in a bed, a man, which was taken with a palsy, and they, everyone together, what are the next two words? And they sought They sought means. So they got a buddy. They got a buddy, we'll call him Obadiah, and Obadiah is a paraplegic. And Obadiah is in the stretcher. And he's got some good friends. And the good friends have been talking, man, if we get you around Yeshua, Yeshua's gonna heal you. So they said, and we heard he's in a home down by Capernaum. He's, he's in one of the homes. We're gonna take you today. Man, that sounds good, man. I've been paraplegic all my life. This is going to be great. So they start, they bring in their buddy, and they start coming to the house. And when they start coming to the house, there's people everywhere. And there's, you know, those lawyers and those scribes and those Pharisees and everyone. And, hey, excuse us, pardon, pardon, can we get, we got, we got Obadiah here. We're trying to get him to Jesus, and nobody's moving. And they say, excuse me, could, could you move out of the way, please? Could, could you, could, we're trying to get, and nobody's moving. One of the guys says, hey, I got an idea. Let's go around the back and bring him in through the window. Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's go through the window, man. That's a great idea. And they start walking. They say, hey, you know what? There's a problem. What's that? There's no windows in this house. That's right. We ain't got no windows. Hey, guys, I got a few shekels. Watch this. Throw some shekels down. Hey, guys, look at the shekels. Look at the shekels. Let's go. Let's try to get them around. Let's try to get them. Let's try to get them. Man, they won't move. They think about this way. They think about that way. They're trying their best to be what? They're trying their best to be creative. Finally, one of the guys says, hey, guys, I got an idea. You know, when we were around the other side of the house, I saw a ladder. Hey, we could take, we could get up on the roof and, 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 and raise uh, Obadiah up on the stretcher, and, and we could go up on the roof. And guys, we could rip the tiles off the roof. And we could lower Obadiah right down to where Jesus is. By the way, do you think about with this guy? You know what? I'm okay, guys. You know, you, know, you know what? I could be a paraplegic for a couple more days. Maybe we'll catch him down at the beach one day. No, 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 no. We got this, man. And they take him up to the roof. They rip the roof off and they lower him down. They got what? They got in trouble too, I think. No, but I don't know. They got creative. Hey, let me tell you something. When you got a friend, when you got a teammate, when you have a sibling, when you have a parent, when you have an employer who doesn't know Christ, you got to get creative. You got to seek means on how to get people to Jesus. You got to learn how to roll the stones out of the way, and you got to think. So, me and my uh, a good friend of mine named Fred, we went down to uh, Brazil on a missions trip. And when we were there, we spent most of the time in Sao Paulo, but for the last four or five days, we went to a little town called Campo Grande. 
And one of our single missionaries, now I say the term single missionaries, personally I don't think there's such a thing as a single missionary because God goes with you. And I just want you to know, you will never do anything for the Lord Jesus Christ without his power and without his presence. And by the way, that's so cool about those three guys in that oven. That whole thing is about the presence of God, not just his protection. When Nebuchadnezzar said, man, there's four people in that oven. That's right, there are. And it's the Lord. And you'll never go anywhere without the Lord being with you. So our girl was named Sheila. Sheila Dull. Pardon? Dull. Like, not sharp, dull. Yep, yep, Sheila Dull. She wasn't dull, but that's her last name. So she's down there. She's down there with a couple seasoned, ah, ancient, two-family missionaries that have been in Brazil for like over 40 years. I think they've done a great work, but I got to tell you what, they're kind of on the retired end. And so Sheila is making everything happen, I'm just telling you. I mean, she is just so on fire for God. And I remember one day when we were there, we walked down this dirt road. And as we walked down this dirt road, Fred and I were walking with Sheila. Sheila stops at this plot of ground. It's all grown up with weeds and bushes and everything. And she said, Pastor Shetler, Mr. Carlson, Brazilians love volleyball. And I said, yeah, yeah, I heard that. I'm thinking, why are we stopped right here? She said, wouldn't this lot be the perfect volleyball court well I looked at the size of it and I thought yeah that, yeah it really kind of could be I said who owns it she said I already talked to the owner and they said that we can clear the land and put up a volleyball court here and she said I think if we put up a volleyball court I think we could see a lot of teenagers come and I think I could lead them to the Lord and I said wow Sheila I said that's a great idea she said do you really believe that pastor I said yes I think that is the coolest idea in the world. She said, well, good, because I got two machetes. I said, what you thinking? Well, I thought maybe we could start clearing it out this afternoon. I said, well, let's do it. So we started going, teenagers started coming from everywhere. In about three, four hours, we got the whole lot cleaned out. She bought a net, she got a ball, we got these posts put in, and they were playing volleyball within three hours in there. And then after that was done, she spoke in Portuguese, and she witnessed to all those teenagers, and guess what happened? Guess what happened? Yeah, nobody got saved. <laughs> that week. But when we got back to the States, she sends me an email. She says, Pastor, had three teenagers saved at the volleyball court last week. She says to me a month later, she said, we had another six young people get saved at the volleyball court. I'm going, way to go, girl. She's got creative. And you know what, young person? It's time for you to get creative. By the way, we were walking past this thing, it's kind of like a YMCA thing, um, and we had a swimming pool. And she said, Pastor, I teach swimming lessons there. I said, you do? I said, what for? She said, the, the children I lead to the Lord after I teach them how to swim. And if they don't learn how to swim, I drown them and then they get baptized. I said, no, no, no. <laughs> but she says, I got, and she said, I want you to meet two twins. These girls were 12 years old. They're just the most beautiful little Brazilian girls. They both just got saved in the swimming lessons. I said, Sheila, do you know, do you have your like certificate? She says, no, but I know how to swim. So they let me teach everyone. And I go, that's just amazing. Just the day before we were to leave, she said, Mr. Carlson, pastor, I need to tell you something. I said, what's that? The last night that you're here, we're going to have a concert. I said, we're going to have a concert. I know I'm not going to be a part of this thing, okay. I, I said, we're going to have a concert. She said, yeah. I said, what kind of concert, Sheila? We're going to have a piano concert. And I said, Sheila, do you play the piano? She says, I got five songs. She said, pray that they don't ask for an encore. She says, I got five songs. We're going to do it in my garage of my apartment. And I've invited all my neighbors, and I've been handing these things out. And I said, wow, that's amazing. She said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a song, and then Mr. Carlson, you're going to give a testimony, and then I'll play two more songs, and then I'm going to give a testimony, and then we'll play two more songs, and then, Pastor, you get up and preach, and I'll interpret for you, and you preach to who's ever there. And I'm thinking, who's coming to this garage concert? It's got 38 people in it. It's packed. That little garage is packed. We do exactly what she says. I get up and preach. After that, she kind of takes over the invitation. Four neighbors raise their hand for salvation. I'm going like, this is like the coolest thing in the world. Now, let me tell you something, young people. 
I, I came forward yesterday. I'm going to start taking a stand. Well, let me tell you something what that means. That means you need to start becoming creative on how you're going to give the gospel out. Now, I'll tell you three words with your creativity. Number one, you've got to be spontaneous. You see something and you react to it. Like, you know what? Right now, that person needs help. Hey, I just heard about a family in my public school that's really going through a tough time right now. You're over. You're all on that. I got a teammate right now that's got a sibling that's going through cancer. Okay, you are all over that young person. It's time for you to start becoming creative and start seeking means to seek people for the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you guys are just not doing anything for God. And you know what? We're beyond that in our country now. Now, I look out tonight, and I'm going like, man, this is amazing who's in here. Look, at there's still hope in America. Look at these young people. But I got to tell you, you got to start becoming creative with the gospel because we are entering into a time that your, your present, presentation of the gospel, you're going to have to think about ways, and you're going to have to think about, God, help me. By the way, some of you got moms and dads that aren't saved. Some of you have got brothers and sisters that aren't saved and relatives that aren't saved. Ask the Lord, God, give me a spirit of creativity on how I can reach them for Jesus Christ. You know, we do a thing here. We take an Easter egg. And I've never been real big on this Easter egg thing. But here at West Coast, we take Easter eggs. And we have this thing called the hunt. And they think that they're hunting for Easter eggs. We're really hunting for souls. And we use those Easter eggs to get people here and their parents are here and their kids are here. And we take something in our culture and we use it for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now let me tell you something, young person. Every one of you in this room have been given abilities, talents, and gifts by God. They are not for you to spend the rest of your life on yourself. They are for you to live for others and use those for the glory of God. And by the way, I'm preaching, you know, I'm getting you know, pretty strong, but this is the greatest thing for you. When you start using what God has given you, whenever I go to a camp and there's um, West Coast students there, I always, at the end of the week, I always ask the camp director, hey, can I just meet with my West Coast students? And they said, yeah, sure. Maybe there'll be five, six, seven uh, West Coast students there. And, and I'll give them two $5 bills. And I say, hey, guys, thanks for giving your summer to the Lord. I know that you're not doing this for finances. And thanks for giving to the Lord for this. And here, here's a $5 bill for you. And here's a $5 bill I want you to do something with. I want you to spend this weekend I want you to spend $5 on you, okay? And they go, yeah. And I want you to take the other $5, and I want you to spend it on somebody else. Maybe another counselor, maybe somebody else, maybe still a camper today. Before you leave, you want to give something to a camper. I don't know, but you got to promise me that you'll spend $5 on yourself and $5 on someone else. Now, i got to tell you something about our, our students. This is just so West Coast. They go, yeah, what, what you got? Dr. Scheller, can I spend 10 on somebody else? No! you got to spend five on you! Do your laundry. I'm telling you, you need to, okay? <laughs> you spend $5 on you, and you spend $5 on somebody else. You guys got that? Yeah, we got it, Dr. Scheller. We got it. I said, okay, then here's what I want you to do. After you do both those things, I want you to ask yourself this question. What did you enjoy more? What did you enjoy more? Did you enjoy spending the $5 on you? Man, I had the best Starbucks on Saturday. Or did you enjoy spending the $5 on somebody else? And then I tell my students, hey, guys, whatever you enjoyed more doing, do it the rest of your life. If you enjoy spending it on you more than spending it on somebody else, then live for yourself the rest of your life. But if you enjoyed spending the $5 on somebody else more than you enjoyed spending it on you, spend your life living for other people. I'm telling you, man, there's a great joy in what I'm sharing with you right now. You get creative and you start saying, dear God, I'm going to seek means. There are people, folks, I don't know how many people are in this auditorium, but we should be able to multiply that by thousands of people that you know that nobody else knows. You're the only light. You're the only salt that they got. 
And I just want to tell you, young people, you need to start moving stones out of the way and start getting dead people to Jesus Christ. Because let me tell you something. If you think, well, we're going to get a really good president in a couple. Of, yeah, that, no, that's not happening, folks. Well, the, you know, we're, we, we've got a really good congressman or a really good congresswoman. Yeah, I know some of them. And there are some God. But let me tell you, our answer is not government, gang. Our answer is not in this world. Our answer is sitting right here, right now. And number one, you're going to have to get creative. Okay, number two, number two, we got to get confident. We got to do, okay, how do you roll stones away? You do it with, number one, you do it with what? Good, I'm losing a few, but not too many. Number two, you do it with confidence. Look, hey, we're in Luke chapter five. Let's stay there for just a moment. Luke chapter five, let's look at verse 19. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude. I just love these guys. They went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the mist before Jesus. Now everyone, look at verse 20. I need your help again. Everyone, look at verse 20. And when he, that would be Yeshua, Jesus, and when he saw everyone together, what is the next word? When he saw Oh, that wasn't good enough. Everyone together. And when he saw their. their faith, when he saw their faith, not Obadiah's, we're talking about the guys carrying them. Now, I'm going to tell you what's happened. We got to start believing that God's going to do something. I am a 65-year-old man. I don't know what I got left, and I don't know if in my lifetime I am going to see revival in America, but I want to tell you two things. Number one, I've been in ministry for 44 years. And over 35 of those, I have prayed for revival to occur in the United States of America, and I have believed it. Now, we may not see it in my lifetime, but I believe with all my heart you are going to see the church arise in America. And I believe you're going to see the church get desperate. And I believe it's going to come with your generation. And I believe that God's going to do something great. You say, well, boy, you believe a lot of stuff. You got a lot of everyone together. I do. I do, guys. And my confidence is in God, not in you. But I am telling you something. God is doing something. With this generation, he's doing something with you, young person. I'm about ready to step out of the scene here. But I'm telling you, you guys have to be confident. Now I want to show you. I got a, a couple pictures here. Uh, put, put that one picture of, of, of my girl Addie here. So uh, it's about a year and, and a half ago, um, I was uh, at a church on a Wednesday night. And the church was pretty full. And Addie... Uh, the blonde girl comes in with the boy who's trying to be her boyfriend and, and the guy in the orange, her brother. And if you notice here, they're sitting on the front row. Now, this is at the end of the service, and, uh, uh, but this is a great, this is so cool. I, I have not gotten up to preach yet, but I'm sitting right down here, and it's like that's 15 minutes into the service. They've done prayer requests. They've done singing. It was around Christmas time, so they sing some Christmas carols and everything. So Wednesday night, December, is this in Indiana? And um, I, I'm about to get up. And Addie and these two boys come down to the front row. This is the front row of the church. They come down. The, she brings them right down. And she has them sit right on the front row. I have no idea who this girl is. I have no idea who the boys are. I'm going like, oh. Kind of interesting. So I get up and preach. I do not preach a salvation message. I do not preach a salvation message. But that night, those two young men trust Christ as their Savior. And let me tell you something. This girl, Addie, she's like bringing people from her public school every week to the church. The day she got baptized, she had 40 people there for her baptism from the school and relatives to see her get baptized. Now, I called today, I called at this church, and I talked to the pastor. And I said, how's Addie doing? And he said, well, I got to tell you something. Addie's moved, and so she's going to another church. But I got to tell you something, Brother Shetler. 
Addie has led so many people to the Lord that not only have the teenagers got saved, but we just baptized two mothers that got saved after their daughters got saved, that Addie brought the daughters to church and got saved. Now their mothers are getting saved, and one of the mothers is bringing her boss to church, and he's come three weeks in a row and about ready to get saved. And I said, this is amazing. What this, and I talked to him, that pastor, today. And this is amazing what this girl is doing. And let me tell you what it is all about. Addie just absolutely believes. If I get people to church, they're going to get saved. Now, let me tell you something. You guys need to start believing this in your youth group. You guys need to start having confidence. You guys need to start, you know what? We're going to say, if I get my friend here, I just know they're going to get saved. Now, I want to tell you something else. We're going to give a gospel presentation in just a moment, but I want you to hear every, what I'm going to tell you. What I would love to hear from this youth conference. Oh, yeah, there were some kids that got saved last night. I pray there'll be some kids that get saved tonight. But I'm going to tell you this. What would be the absolute coolest thing that some of you young people led some people in your youth group that you know are not saved to the Lord tonight in that hotel room. That you would go to them during the invitation tonight and say, hey, you know what you need to do, man. Now's the time. You need to start getting confident. We're, we just so, well, I don't think it can happen anymore. A 65-year-old man should not be rousing the troops. I'll tell you who should be rousing the troops. Some senior guys ought to be standing up and say, man, we can do something for Christ. You don't need an old fogey like me. You need to have confidence. We need some junior hires that believe in God. We, need to, we, don't, need, we don't need old people like me doing this. You guys ought to have the confidence. Let me tell you, if we're going to move stones out of the way, number one, you do it with what? Everyone together, you do it with what? Activity. Number two, you do it with what? Number three, you do it with the clarity of the gospel. Now, I want to talk to you because this may be the most important part of this message. The clarity of the gospel. I've been around the block. And I'm going to tell you something. Adults and teenagers, how many of you believe that you've trusted in Jesus Christ as your Savior? You may not remember the date. You definitely probably don't remember what you prayed. But you believe that you trusted Christ as your Savior. Would you raise your hand? Okay. All right. Now, put your hands up. Now, listen to me. If we started going down and we started hearing testimonies tonight, let me tell you exactly what we would hear. We would hear historical stories of the day you got saved. Yeah, I was eight years old and it was a Wednesday night and uh, there was this group called Awana. And I was eight years old. I was a little sparky. I remember my vest didn't fit real well that night. And it was hot dog night. And uh, I ate two hot dogs that night. And my counselor in Awana, uh, I raised my hand at the council time, and my Awana, uh, my Awana leader took me to the back and led me to Jesus, and I went home and told mom, and about uh, a year later, I got baptized. What was that? Well, Brother Scheller, that was my salvation testimony. Yeah, no, that wasn't. Brother Scheller, what are you saying? Okay, I'll tell you what I'm saying. You told us a historical event that occurred the day you got saved. But that is not your testimony. Because your testimony has to have the gospel in it. You got to tell people how you got saved. And people give testimonies all I hear it all the time in church. Say, so give your salvation testimony. And they talk about this historical story. I'm thankful for the history. I got a historical story. But I never give my testimony without giving the gospel. I talk about what I had to go through. I came from a religious background. Be good, do good, look good. And I tried my hardest. And I was a little religious, 12-year-old sinner on their way to hell. And I went with an independent Baptist church on a, on a youth retreat. And my youth pastor named Dan Wheelhauer asked if anyone wanted to receive Jesus as their Savior. I had no idea what that meant. But I wanted whatever what those kids had because those young people had a relationship. I had religion. But I did not have what those kids had. And I went in the back. I do not remember the verses that Dan Wheelhauer gave. But let me tell you something. 
I couldn't have gotten saved unless I had believed that God loved me. I would have never wanted to get saved. So I know, for God so loved Jim Shatner. And I used John 3.16 in my testimony. Did Dan Wheelhauer use John 3.16? I don't know. I don't remember. But I know I couldn't have got saved if I didn't believe God loved me. And then I couldn't have got saved if I didn't know I was a sinner. So I got for the wages of sin is death. By, the, uh, by one man, sin entered into the world and death passed upon. I, well, did, did Dan Wheelhauer say those verses? For, for all of sin and come short of the glory of God? I don't remember, but I know this. I couldn't have gotten saved unless I knew my thinking is not right. I got bad thoughts. Man, I, I, I take God's name in vain, and I swear, and I cuss. I'm 12 years old, but I got, a, I got a stinking bad mouth. And I'm doing things already at 12 I shouldn't be doing. And I'm involved with stuff at 12 that I shouldn't be involved in. And I knew I was a sinner. And then I believe, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And I use Romans 5, 8 every time I give my testimony. To Dan Wheelhauer, I don't know. But I couldn't have gotten saved unless I understood that Jesus suffered for me. Jesus bled for me. Jesus died for me. Jesus took my place. I couldn't have gotten saved if I didn't understand that. So when I give my testimony, I give all those scriptures. Now, I don't say, and Dan Wheelhauer told me this first night. No, I don't say that. I don't know if he did, but I definitely give that. Now listen to me. When I'm done giving my testimony, somebody could get saved. And gang, that's got to be true with you. You've got to be able to get... And see, here's what we do today. Oh, listen to this. We are so big on hearing sensational testimonies. Whoa! Brother Shetler, I don't think I should give my testimony because I got saved at five at home one night. And what's your point? Well, it's not very sensational. You know what our problem is? Your testimony, when you give it, should use the name Jesus Christ more than your name. And most of us give testimonies, it's all about what happened to me, to me. And I was in this, and I was involved with this, and I did this, and I, that's not what your testimony is. Your testimony is what Jesus Christ did for you. And we put Christ in our testimony. Now, I'm going to tell you something, young people. It's hard to argue with somebody that's experienced something. You can say, no, 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 you, you, you can't do that. Well, I know what I've experienced. And teenager, let me tell you something. You can get the most intellectual evolutionist talking to a, an eighth grade boy in here. But that evolutionist, that scientist, if I put that in quotation marks, that person cannot argue with what you've experienced and teenager, I just want to tell you something. When you give your testimony, you talk about your salvation. And you put Jesus Christ into that. And by the way, okay, so I, I, I play this game. I don't play it much, and I definitely don't play it good. It's called golf. Okay? Let me tell you something about when I go play golf. When I go play golf, I'm getting my money's worth, all right? So I'm going in the woods. I'm going to the bunkers. I'm at the pond. I'm all over the place. Some of these guys I play with, how boring can you get? Psh, drive, middle of the fairway. Chip, right on the green. Two putts, you're in. Man, how boring is that, you know? But I have noticed something. I have noticed this, that no matter how many strokes it takes, we always end up at the same cup. Can I tell you something? I don't know about your testimony, but it always ends up at the cross. And teenager, you got to get a hold of this. I don't care. I don't have much of a testimony, Brother Scheller. I came from a Christian home. Good drive. And, and I go to Christian school. Whoa, a chip on the green. And, and, and I went to Christian camp. Boom, it's in. It's not much of a testimony. That's a phenomenal testimony. Because the same way you got saved at five is the same way the drug addict gets saved at 35. It's you got to come to the cross. And when you give your testimony, you got to know how to use the clarity of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it, 
The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It's not what happened to you. It's what Jesus did for you. And you've got to get that when you give your testimony. All right. How do you roll stones away? With creativity, with confidence, with clarity, and with character. With character. you got to look at this. you got to look at this. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Let's look at verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. And then it says in verse 14, ye are the light of the world. Now, got to hear this. Young people, I'm going to tell you how you can roll stones out of the way and get people to Jesus. You got to start living what you are. And let me tell you the two metaphors that the Lord gives for every one of you in here. Ye are salt. Now, there's four things that salt does. Number one, it holds back corruption. It preserves. Number two, it flavors food. Number three, it makes you thirsty. And number four, it melts ice. And that is exactly the way you're supposed to live your Christian life. You are now the salt of this earth, and you are to hold back corruption. Hey, hey, we don't need to talk like that in the locker room. Oh, come on, man. What are you, a Christian? Well, you know I am. And you know what? I don't want you to take my Savior's name in vain anymore. I'm going to ask that you don't say that again. And you don't need to be telling that joke. And you know what? We're not going to bully that person. You guys got to be salt. You got to show people how to love. You got to show people and hold back corruption. That's your job. You're salt. Now you say, Brother Chandler, I hear this all the time. We're salt, we're light. So what does that mean? All right, I'll tell you. Number one, never has this been true in any generation that I've ever known of, but it's true right now. You know how one of the greatest ways you can be salt and light? This is so, this is like, this is like so easy. If you were this, if you were this back in the 60s, 70s, or 80s, it really, well, like, oh, well, everybody's that. But now, all you have to be is your gender. That's all you have to be, and you're salt and light. If you're a woman in here, would you raise your hand? You're a female, you're a woman. Okay, if you're a male in here, would you raise your hand? Okay, by the way, there's a, those are the only two that there are. Guys, that's it. And I want to tell you something. You want to be sold today? Every one of you young men, start being a man. Start being a protector, a provider, and a leader. Start taking initiative, and you will be salt. Ladies, start being what God created. Well, we don't even know what a woman is. Yeah, the Bible will tell you what a woman is. And a virtuous woman has character, she has calmness, and she has compassion. And we need some godly young ladies. And all you have to be is your gender. And you will be salt and light. Because people are going, like, why do you dress that way? Because I'm a woman. That is a great testimony. Hey, wh why did you take that initiative? Because I'm a man. And you should have done it too. We do that because we're men. That's what we do. We protect. We, we, we do. And I want to just tell you right now, young people, you want to be salt and light? Be your gender. Then I'll tell you, what else? Be your position. Well, what do you mean by that? How many of you are sons or daughters? Raise your hand. <laughs> How many of you are sleeping right now? You don't know what you are, okay? <laughs> All right. Brother Shetler, my parents aren't saved. Okay, okay. Be salt and light at home. You be, you be the best son that you can be. And mom and dad are going, what in the world's happened to you? Why do you have a good attitude now? Are you taking something? No, I got Jesus, Mom. And that's why I got my attitudes changed. You want to be a witness to your unsaved parents? Start living out your position as a son and daughter. Hey, you're going to work somewhere? Man, you be the best Christian worker, whatever. You have character. And that salt and light will be a testimony to other people. Your light will shine and they go like, why do you always have a good attitude? Because I have Jesus Christ. Because I know the Lord. With character. Man, I put down, you're on a team. Man, you're the best team player. You're at work. You're the best worker. You're a friend. You're the best friend. You're a student. You're the best student. And that is a testimony in a light. And that attracts people with your testimony. We got to end. Number five, and we're done. You got to do it with creativity. You got to do it with confidence. You got to do it with clarity. You got to do it with character. And number five, you got to do it with compassion. And I want everyone to hear this verse. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness 
but is long-suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I want to tell you this right now, young person. Every human being that was created in the image of God has an eternal soul, and they were made in the image of God, so every human being has value and has purpose. It doesn't matter who it is. Jesus Christ died for every human soul. It doesn't matter what they're like. It doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter what they can do or what they cannot do. You have got to see the value of every human being. Now, let me tell you this. God is the creator of all mankind, but he is not the father of all mankind. He's only the father to them that receive his son. If you're here tonight and you say, Jim, I know that God is my creator, praise the Lord. Do you know him as a father? And here's the deal. The Bible says, but as many as received him, Jesus, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. If you have never received Christ, well, I believe in Jesus. That isn't what I asked. Have you ever received him? Okay, I believed in marriage on August 15th, 1980. I wanted to be married on August 15, 1980, but I was not married. On August 16th, 1980, I took a bride. I received Mary Lee. And when I received Mary Lee, I got married. I believed in marriage before that, but I wasn't married. I wanted to be married, but I wasn't married. I didn't get married until I took a bride. Now listen. I believe in Jesus, Brother Settler. That's not my question. Have you ever received Jesus Christ as your Savior? Because that's the important thing, that you've come and you've received the Lord. Now, let me tell you, everyone's got value. And you need, if you're going to roll stones out of the way, this is the number one thing, compassion. Having compassion, making a difference. And I close with this story. Years ago, I was on a missions trip to Kenya, and um, we had spent, actually we were in South Africa the first week, and me and another guy named Brian was in, um, in Kenya the second week, and I did a week of meetings in Nairobi, and uh, we had it uh, Sunday through Wednesday night at a, a church called Thika Road Baptist Church in Nairobi, and on Thursday we were having lunch, and we were just going to have another day or so in Kenya, and the phone rang, and Pastor Julius got up and went into the kitchen. Well, he, I, we could hear him talking in the kitchen. And he came back in and he said, Pastor Jim, Pastor Jim, the phone is for you. I said, the phone for me? And nobody, in, nobody in Kenya knows me. So I go in the kitchen. I said, hello, this is Jim Shetler. Voice on the other line. I know who this is. I know a Shetler. Do you know who this is? I'm going, I'm sorry, sir. My name is Jim Shetler. Yeah, Shetler, I know you. You know me. Well, his voice is starting to come a little familiar. And I said, hey, man, can you help me a little bit? Yeah, like one of your best friends in college. And I went, John. Yeah, John. Were you going to get a hold of me while you were in Kenya? And I went, John, I totally forgot. You got an orphanage, don't you? I, yeah, I got an orphanage. Had the orphanage for eight years. You're finally here, and you're not, you're, you were not going to come see me. So I'll tell you what, I talked to Pastor Julius. You and your friend are coming out tomorrow to see the, the orphanage. I said, well, that'll be great. That'll be super. So John comes, picks us up the next day. He's got his little Land Rover, and we drive two and a half hours out to the orphanage. Now, I got to tell you, he can't stop talking about his orphanage, but I can't stop looking. Because I've been in Africa now for almost two weeks, and I haven't seen anything because all we've been doing is services. So we're driving out to his orphanage that drives right past Mount Kilimanjaro. That is like the most beautiful mountain you will ever see. It's got snow cap. It's just one, it's like a big volcano thing. It is just gorgeous. And it was the first time we saw elephants the whole time we were there. I'm seeing elephants in the field. I'm seeing giraffe. He's talking about his orphanage, but I'm like, like this is a safari. I'm enjoying it. So we get, and get close to the orphanage. And as we start coming up to the orphanage, you could see the tops of the grass huts. He's got a little compound. He's got these six little huts. And you see the tops of the huts. And he's driving towards the, to, towards the compound. And the kids start coming out. He's got 18 of them. 
And the kids start coming out. And as we're driving, we're probably, I don't know, 200 yards away. And we've got tall grass on both sides. But you can see these bodies. And some of them, you can tell, like, some of them got crutches. And some of them, I'm going like, man, you know, we're driving up, and it looks like, man, it looks like a couple guys don't have legs or something, you know. I don't, and we're driving up to this, this, this village, this compound, and as we start getting closer, I start seeing these kids, young people. I am not being sensational at all. As we start driving up, I am looking at the most deformed children I have ever seen in my life. And we now drive up to the huts, and these kids, there's four children that had cleft palates with surgeries that did not work well. I mean, they just got their jaws split open, their faces split open. There's a girl that doesn't have an ear, and there's a boy that doesn't have a nose. I have never seen such disfigured children in my entire life. There's one boy named Peter. He's like 16. He doesn't have arms uh, uh, down from his elbows. And he doesn't have legs down from his knees. And I'm going, what in the world? And I looked over at John. And I said, John, what is this? He said, you weren't listening, were you? I said, I don't know. What, what is this? I told you we picked up the street kids. I said, I, I heard you say that. What does that mean? Jim. These parents of these kids, their kids had some kind of surgery or some kind of born deformity, and they threw them out in the streets as trash. And we go down the streets of Nairobi, and we pick these children up. I said, oh, God, I've never seen anything like that. I'm going to tell you this right now. If one of those 18 children was at this youth conference, every one of you, when you got back to your home, did you see that kid? Yeah. What in the world? What happened to that kid? Child? Every one of them just looked terrible. That night at dinner, I didn't eat a thing. Just watching these kids, their food coming out of their face, and they're trying to get their meal, and they got their some of them had their face into the plate. I went like, this is the grossest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. After that, we had a, like a devotional time, and, and, and John and Wendy played the guitar, and they started singing. And I'm, I, I had to close my eyes. But I got to tell you, I don't think I've ever heard As a Deer sung better. They sang Blessed Assurance, and I went, oh, my. That's like the most beautiful voices I've ever heard in my life. And these kids sang for probably 30, 45 minutes. John gave a devotional, and they went off to their huts. And John brought me over, and he said, hey, Jim, tomorrow morning before you leave, you're going to do the morning chapel. And now I got to tell you, you, you Shetler don't say no to, mess, to an opportunity. And I said, John, I don't think so. No, you, you're doing the morning chapel before you leave. He said, I, I said, man, I don't think I want to do that, John. Why? You can't get up in front of these kids and talk to them? And I said, I'm not sure I can. Oh, you're doing the devotional tomorrow. Well, that night, I don't know. What, what do you say to these kids? What do you say to them? What kind of hope do you give them? I don't know what to do. Man, I wrestled kind of most of the night. I came up with something about 2 o'clock in the morning. That can be kind of dangerous. But I thought, well, I'm going to try it and see what happens. So the next morning, I go to the chapel, and I, uh, I got a banana with me. And I come into the chapel, and they all come in, and they're, they're coming up, and they're crawling up on their benches and everything. It's just a little hut. And I said, boys and girls, I said, I'm so excited about chapel today. I said, I got to tell you, boys and girls, I got so excited about chapel today I forgot to eat breakfast. And I said, I got a banana. It was all bruised and it was all scraped up. It was all looked like this one. And I said, boys and girls, would you mind if I had a banana before I speak to you? And they said, yeah, Pastor Jim, eat your banana. Now, I didn't know for sure what was going to happen, but I had a plan B. If it didn't work, I had an idea. But I just took the banana like I'd never eaten a banana before, you know. I took the banana. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. I said, uh, uh, uh. and all the kids started yelling, no, Pastor Jim, no. And I said, no, what? Let me just eat the banana. No, Pastor Jim, outside, no good. I said, what do you mean outside, no good? Pastor Jim, peel banana, peel the banana. Like I'd never peeled one, you know, before. And I go, wait, what are you talking about? Peel the banana. They said, Pastor Jim, outside, no good. Peel the banana. And I go, well, what are you? Oh. Mm. 
Mm, boys and girls, you are so right. Boys and girls, outside, no good. Inside, real good. I said, boys and girls, me and Brian have really enjoyed being here. And there's something I've learned about you boys and girls. They know what they look like. Boys and girls, there's something I've learned about you all. You're outside. Not so good. But boys and girls, you're inside. Real good. Boys and girls, can I tell you something? Jesus didn't come to this world for this. Jesus came for this. And boys and girls, God's got a plan for every one of you. And God loves you. And God is going to do something great with every one of you. Outside, not so good. But you're inside. Jesus loves. And Jesus died for. And you're going to spend an eternity in heaven. Now, young people, you hear this. We live in a world in America today in 2023 that this is all that matters. Can I just tell you, at this youth conference, put this to rest right now. It is not about our skin. It's about our soul. And you better learn it. And you better understand it. Because you ain't moving no stones for Jesus Christ until you understand that every one of us have value, every one of us have a purpose, and God created every one of us in his image. And stop looking at the skin and start living for the souls that'll be for eternity. And young people, I'm going to tell you something right now. You got to start it. You got to be, somebody's got to ignite this thing. And it ain't going to be an old 65-year-old guy. You guys got to start it. And you got to say, dear God, by your grace and for your glory, I'm ready to start moving some stones out of the way. I made a decision last night that I want to stand for God. And Lord, now I know how. With creativity, with confidence. Man, I got to tell you, there's going to be a clarity in my gospel presentation. And when you get that clarity, you can use your testimony everywhere. And you can adapt it to the situation that you're in. When you learn how to give a testimony. Dear God, I need to start, having, I need to start being salt and light and having character. And God, I've only been worried about one person, me. And it's time that I start living for other people. Now, I just want to tell you, usually this is the message that we deal with a lot of sin and stuff like that. But young people, we're in a crisis. But that crisis can lead to revival. You are the hope. If you guys got a hold of what was said last night and tonight and say, by God's grace and for God's glory, I'm ready to roll some stones out of the way. And I'm ready to start living for God. Man, you, you've been given your gifts. You're going to use them for you? Or are you going to spend the rest of your life doing the greatest thing in the world, taking what God's given you and give your life over to him and say, God, I want to roll stones out of the way. So I did something really stupid today. <laughs> I went and bought some rocks. I got two buckets of these things. If you want to roll some stones away for the glory of God and say, you know what? I'm going to start praying for creativity. You know what? I'm going to start believing. God can use my life and God's going to do something in our youth group. We're going to pray tonight in the hotel room. Instead of watching a stupid movie, we're going to ask God for creativity of what we can do as a youth group for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, you know what? I'm going to start working on my testimony. And maybe, maybe my youth pastor will allow me to give my salvation testimony. By the way, youth pastors, what a great idea. Every Wednesday night, have two, three of your teenagers give their salvation testimony with the gospel in it. Man, that's so cool. And you know what, God? I'm ready to start being salt and light. I'm going to be the man and the woman that God created. I'm going to be the son or the daughter that God wants. And dear Lord, I'm going to start living for other people and believe that everyone has value, not my, just my little clique, that everyone has value. And I'm going to tell you right now, with what is in this auditorium right now, our country could be changed 
if we had some folks in here that tonight would say, I'm ready to start rolling stones away. Public schools could have revival. Christian schools could have revival. I want to tell you right now, you guys need to start saying, it's time to start rolling the stones away. Are you ready for your aliyah? Are you ready to ascend? Are you ready to go to a higher cause? Because if you are, I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to get up from your seat, from the balcony, whatever, and come on down and say, dear God, I'm ready to roll stones away. Now, let me, I want to do one thing just before we have that invitation. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here tonight and you have never asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior, you have never said, you know, Jim, I have believed in Jesus, but I have never trusted him. Last night, I, I, I was gonna and I didn't. Jim, I do not want to leave this conference without Christ. And I believe that Christ does love me. I know that I'm a sinner and I know that what I've done needs to be punished forever in eternity in hell. And I know I deserve hell. But Jim, I don't want to go to hell. I believe that Jesus is my substitute. And I believe Jesus took the penalty that I should have experienced for eternity. And I believe that Jesus was died, he buried, and he rose again. And the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How many of you tonight, right now, would say, I want to call upon the name of the Lord and I want to get saved? Brother Scheller, I do not know the Lord and I want to get saved. If that's true, would you raise your hand all over the room? Is there anyone like that at all? Yes, amen, amen. Anyone else besides these few? Anyone else? I've never trusted the Lord. I want to, I want to receive Christ right now. Is there anyone else? Father, I pray for these few that just raised their hand. And I pray that tonight would be their night of salvation. And Father, I pray that even while they're sitting where they're sitting right now, they would say, God, would you save me? Would you save me right now where I'm at? Father, I'm not ashamed. I'll go tell my youth pastor about the decision I made tonight. Dear God, I pray that if they just raised their hand, that they would get that taken care of. With every head, I'd like to have every, I'd like to have every head up, every eye open, okay? So here's what I want you to do. If you're ready to start moving stones and you're ready to start being what God created you to be and you're ready to take your aliyah, could you get up from your seat right now and come on down and say, dear God, that's what I want to do. I want to start living for the Lord. Come on down. You can come down and get a stone here and go some other place. I think there's... tonight, honestly, you ought to get on your knees and you ought to make a commitment to God. What a cool decision. I've never said this before. But you ought to get on your knees tonight and say, God, it's not going to be about skin anymore. It's going to be about souls the rest of my life. I'm not going to worry about skin. I'm going to be concerned about souls. Guys, it's just amazing how messed up we are. Let me encourage you.
while the young people are still picking up their stones, maybe I could get four or five. You know what? We brought all you youth pastors up here to do every kind of crazy thing in the world. Could we maybe have four or five youth pastors come on up and pray for their teenagers and pray for their youth groups and pray for this conference? If we could just get a couple of them, uh, if I could just have a few of the youth pastors just to come and lead us in prayer while these kids are praying that um, I don't know all the needs. I don't know where you're located or whatever, but um, I don't know. I don't know if any youth pastors can get over here. Larry, you could probably start us. If you're a youth pastor and you just like to pray for some of these teenagers, come on up. pastors Speak to their hearts. Encourage them, Lord, that they don't stray. Help their youth pastors, Lord, to continue to encourage them because the devil is going to seek to distract them when they get home. Yeah. So, Lord, I ask you right now, let your spirit move upon these young people. Change their hearts. Change the path that they're going on. And we love you. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we come to you as pastors, youth pastors, parents, teenagers. Right now, we just want to serve you, Lord, with all our hearts. We just want to commit to you our lives. Lord, we can't stay back anymore. We, we need to be in the front of this. We need to be bold in our witness. We need to be bold in our testimony. Lord, I pray that you help every single one of our, our youth here. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a wonderful opportunity to hear the gospel, to, he to be challenged to preach the gospel. And, Lord, I pray that you really work in the hearts of every single person here, and especially for these young people that are willing to roll the stone, to stand for the truth, to preach the wonderful love of God. Lord, help us as youth pastors to be an example to them, to really encourage them, to love them, and to show them that there is so much joy and so much wonderful things that you are blessing us with when we serve, when we surrender our life to you. Lord, we ask this in Jesus Christ's name, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Father, as we continue in prayer, we just thank you for being with us here in this moment. And Lord, the, there's so much potential here in this room. So many stones that could be moved here in this room, Lord. And I pray that they'll take this potential and actually act upon it. Each of us has a bridge. Each of us has a tool. Each of us has an opportunity to be creative and to get to the gospel to someone who's maybe never heard. Lord, for those in the public school, I know it's not an easy situation at times but help them to be the salt and light that you've called them to be. I pray that the, the teachers and the principals will see something in these Christian students and allow them to share that gospel without any hindrance. That the, there'll be revivals spread throughout all the, the schools, Lord. It can happen. We can have revivals spread in the public school. We can have revivals spread in the Christian schools. We can have revival, as Dr. Shetler was saying, in America. Lord, help us just to take what we heard, though, and act upon it. 
Help us to uh, continue to be the salt and light you've called us to be and to have this character and this creativity and, and to take the gospel and to be compassionate with it. Lord, for the, the one or, uh, that's still here who's maybe not yet accepted Christ, I pray that today they would still get that settled. It's not too late. Lord, they know where they're at, and you know where they're at. I pray that tonight they'll get saved. Help us as youth leaders and, and uh, pastors and, um, Lord, the counselors here just to um, encourage these teens to continue to move forward. I pray that when they get home, they won't get distracted or discouraged, but that they continue to stand for you. And you get glory from it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, what is the hope of this country? Is it in politics? Is it in our science? Or is it in you, Lord Jesus Christ? We know that you are the eternal Father. We know that you have the answers to the needs of this country, this world. And Lord, we're asking that you would use these dear people here today, these young people that are picking up a stone and going to roll away some things in their lives so that they can reach their community better. Heavenly Father, would you empower us by your grace, by your sufficiency, by your strength. May we not rely on ourselves. May we not rely on our own knowledge, our own wisdom. But wholly lean on you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we trust you. We love you. You're the God that's, that's everything to us. And Lord, may we rest in you. Father, bless us now and bless this service. And it's in Christ's name. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity we have to listen to your word. And God, just to gather as a group of believers and uh, young Christians and worshiping you and listen to you. God, and I pray that this message will not be taken in vain. That we will apply it over our home and, and our schools. And uh, that tomorrow or tonight, whenever we go back to our, uh, to our normal lives, that we will remember uh, this stone, and that we will remember the decisions that were made. God, thank you for this generation. Thank you for this age of opportunity that you have given to this country. Father, we love you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, as we continue in prayer, we thank you for uh, the message that we've heard from your word tonight, uh, the practical reminders as well. God, I think of the psalmist that wrote, uh, turn mine eyes from beholding vanity. And God, you've done that tonight. You've helped us, you've helped us to see uh, what's truly important, what really matters. God, I pray that we would each, every youth worker, every pastor, uh, every junior high and high school student would take this message to heart. Would not just grab a stone, but would, would with intentionality go back to our neighborhoods, our houses, our communities, our schools with the intention of sharing the gospel. God, I thank you so much for the fact that it was, your, it, was, it was a stone rolled in front of our Savior's grave that we'll celebrate in a week, Lord, that was rolled away. And because of that, we're, there is a hope. God, help us to live as people of hope in a world that has no hope. I pray that we would share that hope the hope that we've received. Help us not to be content just to have received that hope and to live in that hope and not to tell anyone. Help us to do the things that we've been challenged to do tonight. God, help us to get uh, creative in the way that we maybe bring up the gospel in a conversation. Help us not rest on ourselves or how well we uh, give a gospel presentation, but God, help us to trust in you, to lean on your Holy Spirit. Help us to act with courage and clarity. And God, when when you, when you allow us to do this, God, we'll give you the glory for it. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Shetler, for that message. If, if you're grabbing a stone, you can still grab one. If, you, if you're done praying, you can return to your seat. Thank you for being sensitive, Brother Shetler, to the Holy Spirit as he led you uh, to preach this service. I, I believe it's what we needed tonight. And we are, we're a week away. I, I think of the celebration of our Savior's resurrection. I think every single one of your church probably has a, a special service plan. I believe this is the best time of the year to invite someone to church. Whether it's a neighbor, whether it's a family member. And here's what I want you to do. Take that stone. And, and, and scripture, uh, there, there are stones that have significance and those stones that are reminders. 
And here's my challenge to do, to take that stone and put it on your dresser. Put it in your locker. Take it to school with you. Carry it in your pocket if you have to. But don't be content just to take a stone and not share the gospel. Can you imagine what would happen if everyone who took a stone would this week share the gospel with someone? Here's what I believe. I believe that you, if you pray, you say, Lord, would you intersect my path with someone? Every single one of us, God will give that opportunity. We pass it up all the time because we're busy, we're not thinking, we're not mindful of it, maybe we're not courageous enough, not confident enough. I do believe that revival could take out if just the individuals in this room who took a stone would go and tell someone about Christ. So thank you, Dr. Shetler, for that message. I'm going to grab one, and I'm going to share uh, the message of Christ with someone this week. And uh, I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Dr. Shetler, for that message. Let's all stand together. We do have a, a quick announcement video. I think it's only one minute long, but it does, uh, it does uh, communicate some important things. So let's watch this, and then we'll have a word of prayer and be dismissed for our service. Welcome back. We hope you had a great time with Six Flags, conference games, and the services so far. Just so you know, the entire conference, including the videos, will be available for free download at wcbcyc.com. If you're missing anything like a Bible, a jacket, or a cell phone, stop by the Lost and Found, located at Guest Services. Be sure to remove all belongings from the chairs tonight because the auditorium will be refreshed for tomorrow. Youth pastors and chaperones, again, please make sure the teens go to bed and keep a good testimony in the hotel. Stay connected with Pastor Chapel and other administration listed in the conference book, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. The junior senior room will be open tonight in West Wing 201. Stop by for refreshments. If you'd like to submit a question for the Q&A session on Friday morning, text your question to 661-405-400. The pop-up shop in West Wing Lobby is open right after this service. Conference merch is already selling out, so make sure to stop by soon. The campus closes at 11 p.m. Everyone needs to be in their room or at their hotel by then. We hope you have a great night. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, God, thank you for what you did today. Thank you for the sessions that we heard this morning and how we were challenged this evening. God, I pray that you bring us back safely tomorrow, recharged and ready to hear from you. And I pray that we would take the truths that we heard tonight, and I pray that we would apply them to our lives. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great night.